we go. So, uh, I'm going to talk to you about building static sites in React. So, what I want to talk about is, is how to take a, a fairly kind of simple startup, uh, you know, let's say you've got some fairly simple requirements uh, for building a site, but you want to use React. Um, and you, you don't sort of want to kind of invest too much in, in infrastructure and stuff like that. You want to keep things simple. So I'm going to try and uh, take you through step by step how to get from, from zero in, uh, up to having a, a, a site running with, built with React but running on a static server. That emoji did not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the dynamic nature of the internet. So my name's Tim, I work at ABC Brisbane uh, with this guy and that guy and that guy and that guy and <laughs> some other guys. Okay. Uh, so why do we want to use React? Well, React is, uh, it's kind of risen to the top of, uh, you know, this kind of component-based uh, architecture of, of building sites. Um, it's got a really great API and it's got a huge developer uh, community um, and it's very well supported. There's lots of things to love about React, whether you love it or not. Um, <laughs> so the component-based architecture is, is, I guess, the main, the, the main reason why I want to use React for building stuff. Uh, obviously there's uh, universal code, you can run code on a server uh, as well as running it on the client. It's got a great developer experience and, of course, uh, street cred. <laughs> so why do we want to build static sites? So this is a chart of the time it takes for all of these different devices to uh, pass and render a, a typical JavaScript bundle. So at the top there, we've got a MacBook Pro running Safari 10, and then kind of about four or five down is, is the Apple iPhones. And then right down here at the bottom, that's uh, my iPhone since iOS shipped that update where they throttle your, uh, your CPU speed if you've got an old battery. So obviously performance is the big one. Um, React is traditionally used for, for building client-side apps uh, where you know, you've, you've got all of your code inside JavaScript, so nothing can happen until that JavaScript downloads, passes, and, and, the, and the app boots up. Uh, so, it's not really fair to make users pay the cost of, of, that, uh, of that overhead uh, if, the, if there's no need for ha having your, uh, your website as a, you know, as a client-side application. SEO is another big one, so you know, if you've got, say, you know, a site that's a blog or anything else that's where SEO is important, um, then I know that React and a lot of these other client-side frameworks have ways of, of being indexable by search engines, but static sites, they just work out of the box. You don't really need to do anything. And also, uh, static sites have really basic hosting needs. <clears throat> so there's kind of two ways of, of uh, getting around this, um, this overhead of uh, you know, client-side applications. One of them is server-side rendering, and the other one is static rendering, or also known as, as pre-rendering. Uh, so React has is, is, React has come a long way, and one of the kind of killer features of React is server-side rendering. Um, but you know, if we think about that, this is kind of similar to a traditional kind of uh, client-server model where. You know, the, the user comes along and, and makes a request, and the request goes to the server, and the server pulls out a file, and then that executes some code, and that generates some HTML, and then that HTML gets sent to the browser, along with all of the other, uh, you know, static assets. That's all well and good, <clears throat> but, you know, what that means is that then you're running a node server, and you've got all of this kind of infrastructure, and that's great if you've got DevOps, but if you just want to build something and you know ship it uh, and, and you don't actually kind of have the, the team to kind of solve all those problems then it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So uh, static rendering or also known as snapshot rendering, I've completely stolen these images from Glenn Madden so um, I've got a blog post about this, you won't find these images on my blog post but I've, I've put them in here uh, so none of you tell Glenn that I stole this. <laughs> 
So what, what this is, is you, you basically pre-render or you, you kind of you do all this uh, uh, static rendering before <coughs> kind of uh, in this build and deploy stage. So, so you do it ahead of time on either your local machine or on a, a, on a build server or something like, um, like Travis CI or uh, yeah, Bitbucket have one called Pipelines now. Um, it, there's, uh, I think it's Jenkins is another one. Um, there's a bunch of these things around. So what you can do is you can set up a, ta a build task so that when you deploy code, it will generate that HTML and it will stick that in whichever file storage, uh, file storage of your choice. And then when the user comes along and, and makes a request, they just get the files. So all of that work's been done ahead of time, and it's just like you know, it's 1996, and you're just going to get they're just going to get HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which by now we know works pretty well. So static site hosting has fairly basic needs. You can use uh, some of these things, and there's probably like a million other choices here. But uh, the one I've used uh, successfully is. is Amazon S3, GitHub Pages is something you've probably all looked at, uh, static pages rendered by GitHub. And there's some of the other, you know, a couple of the other ones that are popular around. So the tooling for this, uh, this is kind of a bit of an evolution of the tooling around this. So when I first started looking into this, uh, I came across the uh, SEO friendly named Static Site Generator Web <laughs> Plugin, um, which is developed by Mark Dalgleish, who uh, is a Melbourne based developer who works at Seek, and he's done a bunch of stuff with CSS modules and, um, and some other cool things. Uh, and then there's Gatsby.js, which is kind of like a, that's like a framework, and that actually uses the Static site generator webpack plugin under the hood, uh, but that's something that it's, it's there's quite a lot. It's quite an investment. You've really got to kind of dive into that and learn their um, you know the, the uh, API and, and, and the sort of uh, the way in which you have to develop for that. Phenomic is another one which is similar to Gatsby JS. I know even less about that. React Snapshot is one that was generated uh, that was uh, developed by Glenn Madden, uh, who I stole the screenshots from earlier. Um, and then React Snap is kind of an evolution of that. That's something that was uh, that was inspired by React Snapshot, um, but it's uh, it, it's kind of uh, a, a bit more flexible. So let's build something. So the starting point for this is create React app. So whether you've used React or not, um, if you were to start dabbling in React, then create React app is where you want to start because that's going to give you Something that, that works out of the box, uh, that's that's got a bunch of uh, problem. You know, they've solved a lot of problems and they've they've uh, they've packaged it up and they've given you something which you can just kind of uh, npm install or yarn install and and you run this uh, this script and that will give you a, a working a React app in a new directory called Static React. And it looks like that. So from here. Well, we want to take that kind of out of the box create React app and we want to kind of start doing some stuff. So the first thing is we add a couple of pages. So we're just going to scaffold out uh, a home.js and a page.js which basically just render out the words home and page. And then we want to kind of wire this up. So we're going to add React router. And then what we're looking at here is, is kind of the, the diff against the out of the box create React. So here we're going to include the uh, some of the goodies from React Router and our two files that we just created. And then this file continues on here. And you can see we've wrapped the whole app in the uh, the router. And then we've got a couple of uh, routes here inside the switch statement. This is all sort of React Router uh, API stuff. And then some links here so that you know we can navigate around. So we can see where we're at here, which is this thing which I've just got running locally. So we've got home, we've got post, home, we've got post. Cool, that doesn't really do much. So from this point, this is actually a working app or a working website that we can deploy somewhere. So I've personally used Travis uh, to deploy from GitHub to S3. I won't go into that here because there's a little bit of kind of, you know, that's 
bit of a tangent, but this is kind of a, a basic config file that will get you there. And you, all you're doing is you're telling Travis, which is your build server, that you want to use Node and you want to yarn install some all of the dependencies and then you want to run the build script and you want to send it to S3 with your credentials and you don't want to delete the files when the build's finished because you want to then push those files out to your bucket in your region. I've got here, it's a bit trickier on Bitbucket pipelines, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So from here we'll have our our, our basic bootstrapped create react app client side application which is up on S3 and now we can kind of see where we're at. We'll, we'll run a bit of a benchmark. So if we crack open DevTools and, and we run, a, uh, we run the, the screenshots against this, we can see exactly when this page starts to load. So right about one minute, well, one second, 1.5 seconds, we can start to see something we don't really get anything meaningful until 2.09 seconds. That's kind of the, the first meaningful paint. <clears throat> so that's kind of two seconds for for this, which is bugger all. Still working on this three finger. <laughs> so how do we improve that? Well, we, we want to introduce the static build step. So, uh, before I mentioned React Snap, which was my chosen static site kind of generator package. So we install that. The, the thing that's interesting about React Snap is it uses Puppeteer under the hood. Puppeteer is, is the uh, node package for Google's headless Chrome. And then we make a couple of changes to the out-of-the-box uh, index file here, so we're going to change uh, the what we're importing from React DOM to specifically the hydrate and render methods. Hydrate something that's new to React 16, and then down here, instead of just rendering that out, what we want to do is we want to we want to reference this uh, this get element by ID root, and we want to check whether that's actually got children. And if it does, we're going to hydrate that, and if it doesn't, we're going to render it. So basically, what that means from a practical standpoint is that when we're doing yarn start and we're running this in development mode, it's going to do the render and then we get hot module replacement we can kind of have this really kind of fluid development experience. But when we're running this on the build server, the build server is not going to know anything about that and that's going to do, uh, oh sorry, when the, uh, uh, when your static host like S3 delivers down the, um, the pre-rendered HTML with your JavaScript, that's going to say, okay, I've already got that markup here, so instead of chucking that out and re-rendering it all, I'm going to hydrate that. And so hydrate is just a React uh, method for basically saying, if all of this work's already been done, I'm just going to use that and then attach event listeners and, and kind of optimize for performance. And then we can wire in React Snap just by hooking into the, the post-build NPM script. So now if we deploy that, uh, version of the app to S3 and we run this and we benchmark it, what we can see is that we get the same thing that we had in two seconds in 719 milliseconds. So we've tripled our speed by simply just adding an off-the-shelf package and making a couple of changes to your, you know, your basic create React app straight out of the box. <coughs> But that's still pretty useless, so what we need is, is a way to actually manage our content. So this is just one of many kind of API-driven CMSs. Uh, I've, I've used Contentful uh, with great success. Uh, so this has got a really nice um, node package and they've got you know, tons of great documentation. So once you kind of get yourself a Contentful uh, account and create a space and all that stuff, you'll get some API keys which you can throw into an environment very, uh, environment file here. <clears throat> and then if we go back to our home.js file that we, that we kind of stubbed out earlier, we can start to kind of wire this up a bit. So we're gonna, in, we're gonna import Contentful, and then uh, in this component we'll mount, which is one of React's lifecycle methods, we're saying that we want to basically kind of connect to Contentful and then we run this get entries and 
when that uh, resolves its promise, we're we're going to push those, uh, you know, that, that list of, of items or, or blog posts. We're going to push that into a, a posts array. And then in the render for this, what we're doing is we're just looping over that and we're logging it out to see what we get. So here, what we get is the the object, the the, the, the you know basically the, the data structure from content form. So we can see here that we've got a title and a content. We can start to to do stuff with this. We can see that we've got a unique um, key here that we can use. So if we come back to our our home page, we can update that to say we're going to create a, a link. So a link is is the React Router uh, method for wrapping you know something, uh, and, and we're going to give that. The uh, the unique key which we which we just saw, and we're going to stick the title in that. And then back in the app file, we just update our switch statement to actually uh, instead of it being a static um, a static route, we're, we're actually kind of looking at the dynamic key. There. And then for the post, what we want to do is is we we get the key or we get that ID from the route that's coming through, so when someone clicks on one of those links, they come through to here and Contentful is going to say, okay, I want to get this individual entry. So now if we look at that in the console, we can start to see that this is the content that we've specifically put into our CMS that we created in a few minutes. And then we can render out the title and the content and oh, I've got an example of this. Now, I talked a little bit before about uh, if SEO is important to you, and that's one of the reasons why you want to generate a static site. Uh, so, the other important thing for SEO is actually having metadata. So, React Helmet is a great tool for that. We can again just make a couple of changes here. So, we'll bring in React Helmet, and we can insert the, the Helmet component, give it the title, and that's going to actually render out a title tag on our static page. And we want to support Markdown as well, just to make our development workflow a lot easier. Marksy is one of the many choices for uh, uh, support of rendering Markdown, um, and, and it's, it's going to actually render that out to a React tree for us. <clears throat> so Contentful supports Markdown out of the box, so if I was to drop this into, into the editor, then I'd be able to work with that by importing Marksy, writing a little helper function which is going to say take the field that's coming from Contentful and we're going to attach React or create element to that and then we're going to, we're going to return a compiled tree. So then instead of just rendering the, the content straight out of the data object, we're going to actually run that through our get markup function. And then what we get out of that is something that looks a little bit like this. So actually, I'll just jump back here. So this markdown here is basically rendering out to this. Whoop, whoop. It's this finger thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there we go. So to wrap this up in a little bow for you all, we start with create React app. We add the router, we wire that up to a CMS, we add something to handle our meta tags for us, we add something to handle our markdown, and then we snapshot it, and what we get is, this is a, an example, that I, a site that I built for a mate of mine who's a designer. Um, so. He put a ton of effort into uh, what this site was to look like, uh, and then, you know, specifically how he wanted all these interactions to work. Um, but he still hasn't given me any actual copy, so there's <laughs> all this random rubbish here, and there's not any actual images for anything. <laughs> um, but what you can see is that this is uh, I, I can turn off JavaScript here. 
And so this thing's going to work with JavaScript turned on. So that's not really that we, we care about this site working with JavaScript turned off because, you know, it's arguable about whether or not that's important. But what that kind of, it's, it's more of a benchmark that, you know, that this is actually going to give us the performance, uh, you know, the, the performance that we care about. And then interestingly, the, because we've got the, uh, the site being served statically, but we've also still got our JavaScript that we authored in React, then we get this nice sort of little, uh, we can, we can create these little interactions and we can do all these things that are really nice and easy to do with, uh, with state management and stuff like that um, because we're building with React. There we go. So because I don't expect you all to remember this, I've written this up as a tutorial on, on my site uh, there and I've put all of those packages together in a little starter kit repo. Uh, which is there. Uh, so you can't. Re I'm not really good at social media, so uh, I can't offer any ways to follow me other than just walking around behind me. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, and we're hiring at the ABC. So if anyone wants a job at the ABC, come and talk to me, and I'll tell you who to talk to. Thank you.